Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Assistant on Air. This season, we're chatting with developers and designers who recently built some really cool games for smart displays. My name is Mary, and I'll be your host today. I work on developer relations for the Google Assistant, and today we'll be chatting with Eric, who's a technical director at BeReal, who led the development of the game Mime Jam. Hey, Eric. Thanks for being here. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Tell us a little about yourself. Uh, I'm a New York-based creative technologist and developer. Uh, I've been working with technology for a little over 15 years now. Um, for the past eight years, I've been with a creative agency in New York called BeReal. Um, I love taking the idea of uh, using technology to help further tell a story and you know, uh, push a creative idea in new and interesting ways. And, uh, you know, thankfully with B-Real, like that's exactly what they love doing too. So uh, it's been a, it's been wonderful working with them. Yeah. And B-Real has worked on some really interesting projects with Google. So we thought your team would be perfect on this collaboration. So speaking on uh, this actual project, tell us what Mime Jam is. So Mime Jam is a charade style uh, party game with uh, a bit of a twist. It reverses the roles of who's acting and who is uh, guessing um, um, the word that's uh, that's up for that round. Um, instead of it being one individual that's acting and a group of people guessing, it's actually um, a group of people acting and one person guessing. But it ends up being a lot of fun, uh, especially the sillier the acting gets, um, and uh, you know, trying to have that guesser um, match the correct word. Yeah, acting as a team always uh, ensues a lot of laughter and silliness, so it's a great game. Um, so let's talk about the ideation for a little bit. How did you come up with the idea of Mime Jam to be a party game using the smart display? I mean, the, the idea of Mime Jam actually just started out from uh, like a good old-fashioned brainstorm. We did have like a couple things that kind of helped guide our ideation. Um, we knew smart displays were like an ever-growing thing in people's homes and um, we love the idea of like uh, leaning into that to have it be kind of a, facil a facilitator for this game um, and almost do like a game night experience surrounding it um, you know we knew we wanted it to be something that got people out of their seats it got people moving we didn't want it to be like you know step by step you have to sit on a couch and you know just look at a display we wanted it to be really interactive and then, of course, we wanted it to be a multiplayer. It was meant to be a party style game. Um, you know, it would be no fun if it was a group of people just watching one person interact with it. Um, and then uh, finally, um, you know, we were super excited about the the new continuous match mode. So that was uh, top of our mind to figure out a way that we could kind of leverage that and integrate it into the game. Um, from that point, um, after we kind of like finessed a, a couple ideas, um, we did this. Uh, I mean, we call it like a whiteboarding or tissue session, but uh, however you want to put it, but it literally involved us putting sticky notes on um, on a board and having cue cards for actors to come in and, you know, kind of mimic the interaction that we intended for the game. And we did that with a few different ideas and uh, Mime Jam ended up not only being the most fun, but like the, the most playful and it kind of really hit all those core points that we were trying to um, uh, kind of match from the beginning. I loved how you described the whiteboarding and just the brainstorming aspect of it. It's nice that we often go back to the basics when we're brainstorming, even when the technology gets more and more advanced. So with this new technology, it's a new game, there's multiple players. Imagine onboarding the players could be a little difficult. Did you have any challenges when you were teaching people how to play the actual game? It was kind of balancing how quick you were able to convey how the game was played um, with you know, ensuring that people like understood and knew. So, you know, it was, it was a process of balancing the voice UI along with the visuals on the screen and kind of using those to work with each other to uh, make things simple and interesting and uh, educational, you know, extremely quickly. So people only had to watch the instructions once and um, they were able to jump right into the game and get it right away. As you mentioned earlier, Mime Jam uses continuous match which is basically a new tool where the mic can stay open for an extended period of time and the Google Assistant listens for certain keywords. Can you tell us how Mime Jam uses continuous match in the game? Um, basically, each, each round um, it lasts a minute long, and that's where um, there's one guesser and then the, the rest of their teammates are acting. Um, so over the course of this round, um, uh, their teammates are acting, and if the guesser guesses the correct word, 
um, they, uh, it, they're able to shout the word correct. If the word is too hard, they're able to shout the word skip. Um, and this goes on loop until, um, until the one minute timer expires for the game. So this is actually where we're using continuous match mode. Uh, we are listening for those like keywords um, that happen during that one minute round to say, correct, this team gets another point um, or skip, you know, move forward, choose a new word without, uh, um, choose a new word without, uh, without giving them any points. Yeah, continuous match opens up new kinds of gaming experiences with really low latency, and we definitely see that in Mind Jam. Now, for some of the best parts or the parts I really enjoy, the fun visuals and sounds that come with the game. Can you talk through how the various sound effects and music were incorporated into the entire experience? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think this was one of the things that was really great about the the Mime Jam um, game is we had a we had a a creative vision on it from the beginning. You know, we wanted to keep it like light and playful and energetic. Um, we also wanted to give it a bit of like a retro style feel. Um, you know, kind of like as a juxtaposition to kind of the newness of the smart display platform. You know, and it's also like a bit of an ode to modernizing a classic game. So we kind of had that vision in mind from the get-go, and you know, like the next steps were to, um, you know, put it to the canvas, and then uh, we also had to keep in mind that uh, there's over five thousand words in the Mind Jam gameplay library, um, um, and there are varying lengths, varying number of words um, within the phrase. Um, so we had to come up with a visual system that uh, would allow all those visuals to expand and um, adopt to no matter what word length that we put in front of it. So implementing that was a, uh, implementing that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, and then uh, once we had the core visuals set in place, the rest of stuff was just like fun introducing animations and little quirks that are sprinkled throughout. throughout. Um, I mean, if you see the game end screen, um, it's probably one of my favorite pieces of the game. You know, it's uh, it's kind yeah. of a perfect example of this. We got uh, uh, we have confetti falling down to celebrate the winners, and the winners are all like happy and dancing. And then uh, the <laughs> the losing team is over in the corner, and there's tears coming out of their eyes because they're so so upset. Um, but you know, it was just like that was the exact type of fun that we love to have, and um, when it came to like putting those like little finessing touches on it. And then from the for the sound design, we worked with uh, some really great um, uh, team members that, you know, like they started to see the visuals in the game where the game was evolving and was able to put a perfect soundtrack to it. And you know, we look back at things um, from, you know, from the vision that we had from the beginning, and it matches perfectly, which was like always a good feeling. I love the slap sound when the new sticker hits the board. It it's just it's very rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> so. Every- <laughs> Everything, yeah, everything you just described uh, made the game feel like a canonical party game that people can just keep going going back to. And I think that's definitely the vision that we were trying to achieve. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing these insights. Of course, it's been my pleasure. You know, really, uh, we love working with you guys and uh, love being a part of the uh, the assistant platform and uh, exploring it with you. And that's a wrap on today's episode. If you want to try out Mime Jam or the other games that we'll be talking about this season, check out the link below. Bye for now.